Throughout the Western world, people's policy views tend to fall in one of two ideological clusters. The first favors government spending on foreign aid, affirmative action, environmental protection, welfare, and universal health care, while the second supports spending on the military, police and law enforcement, and border control. This ideological constraint is remarkably similar across countries that otherwise differ in meaningful ways, and it's not obvious why these particular policy views should always go together. This paper argues a key factor is moral universalism. This is the extent to which people exhibit the same level of altruism and trust towards strangers as they exhibit toward in-group members, such as family and friends, or those that share the same ethnicity, religion, or nationality. Universalism is not related to a person's overall level of altruism or trust, but rather to its slope as a function of social distance. Communitarians have low universalism and are less altruistic towards those who are socially distant, while universalists allocate their altruism more uniformly. This distinction is highly relevant for political ideology. Many policies involve the welfare and anticipated behavior of people who are socially distant, so an individual's level of universalism should affect their policy preferences. Building on this observation, the authors hypothesize that it is differences in moral universalism across individuals that impose this particular structure on the ideological space. One cluster consists of policies that require high altruism towards and trust in socially distant individuals, while the other comprises policies aimed at protecting and caring for certain in-groups. To assess this empirically, the paper leverages rich survey data from over 11,000 individuals in Australia, France, Germany, Sweden, and the US. Respondents provided detailed information on their policy views and participated in decision tasks designed to elicit their level of universalism. In each, they were asked to split a hypothetical $100 between two equally rich individuals, one a randomly selected stranger and the other a randomly selected member of one of their in-groups, for example, their extended family. This figure shows the distribution of moral universalism as measured in the surveys. The x-axis reflects the amount out of 100 allocated to random strangers, so universalism is increasing in this direction. There is substantial heterogeneity in respondents' degree of universalism, and, in addition, their policy views are strongly clustered in the usual way. To show these phenomena are closely related, each panel here shows the estimated relationship between an individual's level of universalism and their support for a particular policy. For example, this panel shows that in all five countries, there is a strong positive relationship between universalism and support for government spending on foreign aid. Overall, Universalism is strongly predictive of respondents' policy views and in directions that rationalize the patterns we generally see. Universalists support typically left-wing policies, and communitarians support typically right-wing policies. This holds even after netting out other characteristics that may influence an individual's policy preferences, such as their age, income, education, views on government efficiency, and overall levels of altruism and trust. In terms of magnitude, the relationship between universalism and policy views is substantially stronger than the relationship between income and policy views, and is about two-thirds as large as the impact of people's self-reported political ideology. This indicates that universalism quantitatively matters for policy views, but the paper argues that it also drives the particular intracorrelations we observe. This figure shows the average intracorrelation in predicted policy views in the survey data. 
Starting from this benchmark, the authors ask how much this correlation would change if all the variation in a given characteristic was collapsed to its sample mean. For example, this bar shows that eliminating variation in respondents' age has little impact on the intracorrelation in their policy views. In other words, differences in age don't explain why policy views are correlated in the particular way we observe. The same is true for other characteristics, with one notable exception. Eliminating variation in universalism substantially reduces the intracorrelation in policy views, which indicates it is the only variable here that meaningfully contributes to ideological constraint. To show this in a different way, recall that universalism is correlated with policy views in a pattern that exactly replicates the usual left-right ideological clusters. The authors identify 10 other characteristics that are strongly related to respondents' self-reported ideology and show that none can replicate that same pattern of policy correlations in a statistically or economically significant manner. These results support the argument that universalism systematically shapes policy views, but one potential concern is the role of political parties. An individual's support for a policy may be entirely determined by their party's stance on the issue rather than by their own preferences. These figures rebut this by demonstrating that people's views on broad policy domains depend on how universalist the specific implementation of the policy is. This side shows how support for welfare and environmental protection varies with respondents' self-reported ideology. As expected, left-leaning individuals are far more likely to support national redistribution and global climate change prevention, but when these policies are implemented in more communitarian ways, right-leaning individuals become almost as supportive of them. The results are similar for other policy domains, which suggests that people's policy views do depend on how universalist those policies are. Thus, this paper draws a connection between moral and political views and argues that differences in universalism across individuals can account for the particular ideological structure observed in Western democracies over the last few decades. Exploring how and why these dynamics may differ outside the West is an important question for further research. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. This includes research on ideological constraint, moral universalism, and the determinants of political attitudes. <laughs>